Hello, welcome. This is Jennifer, and I'm glad you're here. I have a lot of cards and techniques to share with you today. Remember, you can always watch these longer videos in little chunks because I have so many cards included. Now, what I'm sharing today is about using bundles or product collections. This is when there are like stamps, dies, hot foil plates, and stencils that can be used together or separately. I'm going to talk about how to look at these kind of collections so it's not overwhelming and to remind you, you don't need all of it. I'm also going to share ideas for using them creatively so you really stretch the products that you purchase and make sure that you are getting the most from them. I am focusing on little product collections today where there are different products that can be used together separately. None of these things are bundles where you have to buy them all together. I love when companies offer this, a little mini collection so you can pick and choose what you like and they work well together separately. It gives you more options. Some people prefer stenciling, some people prefer stamping, some like hot foil plates, some like stencils. That way you can choose what you get and there's a little something offered to everyone. Now I'm starting with some different card options using this new Pink Fresh Magnolia pattern collection. So there's the six by six stamp and the layering stencils. These are sold separately so you can choose which you like. I'll show you how to use them together and separate. I feel like uh, these little product collections sometimes get a bad rep because people feel like they have to get them all in order to use them, but I'm showing you that's not the case. I'm hoping today's video will kind of reframe your thinking when you see a product collection from a company, like a series of products that go together and will help you to look at it as a good thing where you can kind of pick and choose as opposed to feeling overwhelmed. So that's what we're doing here. So far I have heat embossed the background image. I use black pigment ink and then clear heat embossed it. Now I have the layering stencils and I'm adding ink on top. I've placed my uh, heat embossed background onto a sticky mat, which will hold it in place and also hold the stencil that I'm putting on top. And I'm just quickly applying a light amount of ink. I do like to sometimes go back and add a heavier amount in different areas, just so we get that kind of shadowing look to it. But you could definitely skip this if you want to save time. Now for this, I'm using the stamp and the stencil together, but I wanted to show you can use the stencil by itself. So while I'm creating this one, this combo background, I'm also going to create another background with just the stenciling. I will use the same ink colors on both, so I'll just switch from background to background using each stencil. Now this is one of my first tips. If you see a stamp and layering stencil set available that go together, I encourage you to look at what this layering stencils look like alone. In this case, when you use the layering stencils alone, it looks like a complete background. You can tell what the flowers are. Sometimes layering stencils are really only meant to color in a stamp set. It doesn't look good by itself. The stenciling doesn't kind of stand alone. That, in that case, you're a little more limited by how you can use it. So if you're looking to invest in a stamp and stencil combo, make sure they can work well together or separately to make the most of it. A lot of Pink Fresh's collections work great together or separate. I'll demonstrate this again later on in the video. So here I'm on the second layering stencil and I'm adding ink over our uh, stamped background. And then I'll do the same thing over our unstamped background. And you'll start to see the flowers form on this one. While I do all of this inking, I thought I'd also mention that I think layering stencils are one of the best products you can invest in. If you haven't tried layering stencils yet, I encourage you to try them. I find that they're kind of foolproof. As long as you line them up, you'll get great results. You can use any of your inks over them. You can use your gels, your paste, your sprays, and they can be used so creatively. The price point is good. Oftentimes your layering stencils are less expensive than a stamp set and so much more you can do with them. They are also faster to use. So if you want to pick and choose between products in a collection, always look at those layering stencils because they can be used in so many ways. 
Now I'll skip through a few of the stenciling steps here because all I'm doing is lining it up and inking it. And uh, I thought I'd also mention another reason I really recommend layering stencils is because you can experiment with creative color um, combos. So here I'm using pink, purple, yellow, and coral together on a floral image. Very easy to try out those combinations and somehow it always works great. Now one more thing I mentioned before, I recommend looking at the layering stencils and stamp that work together and separately. If you're unsure of if the layering stencils work without the stamp, I recommend looking at the company's website because they usually will show examples without the stamp if the layering stencils look good on their own. So you can always check there. You don't have to try to figure it out on your own or like in this case, I'm showing you in a video. So look at that beautiful soft background. Two very different looks, even though I use the same colors of ink. And I have another card using the stamp and stencil set that I'll share after these completely different look. All right, let's finish off the background where we did not do the outline stamping. I thought it'd be fun to add some light stamping over it to get a different look and to use some other supplies again, something that I hadn't used in a while. I have the Pink Fresh Studio Small Butterflies Collection. Again, I'm not gonna call it a bundle anymore because you don't have to buy them together. There is in this collection a stamp, a hot foil plate, layering stencils, and a die. I've used this in a video before, doing some really creative uses with the hot foil plate. I will link to it up here in the top right and at the end of this video. But this time, I'm just using that stamp. Now the stamp has all of these butterflies connected because they line up with the other products in the collection. You can cut them apart if you want or just selectively ink different butterflies and stamp them wherever you want as I'm doing here. I'm using a light gray ink and stamping it in some of those kind of open spaces on the background and letting it overlap with our light stenciled inking. I thought this would create a beautiful like pattern paper look. So I'm just inking up individual butterflies, stamping them wherever I want. You could mask different butterflies off and stamp them. Didn't really take long and I was able to use this stamp creatively. So I continued to do that and once I was done, I trimmed the background down to fit on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I thought I'd add some more soft stamping on top. So I just looked through some of my different stamp sets for sentiments that would be nice in the background. I ended up really liking this and I plan to do this more in the future. Add stamping, just random light stamping over my layered stenciled backgrounds. I couldn't have done this over the outline stamping because it would have been too busy. All right, now for a sentiment on this, I'm using a great die set. This is the Jeff Alpha die set from Pink Fresh, named after one of my dear friends, Jeff Lindbergh. It has the letters and the shadow dies included, and I'll be using it a few times in this video. It's great for making a personalized card or adding small sentiments like hugs, hi, hello, or you. I'm also using the Pink Fresh Floral Trio. This is a new one, another collection. You have the stamp that would be great for doing watercolor or coloring. There's a hot foil plate, coordinating dies, and layering stencils. So in this case, if you prefer to color, you could use the stamp set alone and color it. If you prefer to use stencils, you can use the stencils to color it or use the stencils alone. Remember that companies don't come out with all of these products in a collection expecting you to have to have them all. It's just different options for different people. So here is the completed card. I use the alphabet dies with white cardstock for the shadow and then gold cardstock for the letters. I stamped wishing you all the best with black ink and used the coordinating die to cut it out and added that on top of the U. I also used some glitter drops from Pink Fresh Studio, the gold color, and scattered those for a bit of sparkle. So this background technique is a great way to use your layering stencils along with other random stamps to create a unique look. I'll definitely revisit this idea in future videos. Now for the other background where we have the black outline and the color done with the stenciling, I wanted to keep this simple, so I chose a simple sentiment. This is the Pink Fresh Studio's Wonderful Sentiments Collection. There is a stamp set with, and there's coordinating dies and a hot foil plate set. So the dies work with either the hot foil plate 
or the stamps. So whatever you prefer, I know some people don't like foiling, you can definitely use the stamp. Now for this card, I did a black stamp sentiment and used the coordinating die to cut it out. I really like the style of these sentiments and use them a lot in this video. I, this is like my go-to design when I have a bold background that I really wanna show off. I put it up on the top left corner, uh, corner, a little wonky, as you see, and I put a sentiment along the bottom edge. That way I can quickly create a card and let that background shine. I did add a little bit of bling using Pink Fresh Studio Pink Glitter Drops. I have one more example using the stamp and stencil combo, just to show you the really different ways you can use products like this together to get fun looks and fun techniques. For this card, I have already white heat embossed the floral background stamp on white cardstock, and I'm lightly applying light colors of ink over it, just some blues and greens. And you can see how the white heat embossing resists the ink I'm putting on top. and gives a beautiful soft background. You could leave it at this. This would be a great background for any card. However, I want to add a little more bold color into the flowers, so I'll use the layering stencils. Now, in this case, if you don't have the layering stencils, you could just color in over that ink with some markers or maybe do some watercolor. Some people really enjoy markers and watercolor and colored pencils. For me, I would prefer to use ink and layering stencils. And I like that the options are available depending on what you like to do. So I just used all of the stencils, as I showed you before, applying the same colors of ink, just darker shades. And look at this result. I love that, where you have the heat embossed resist with different colors around it. A very different look than the other options. So think about different techniques you can combine with your products to get different looks. Now to finish this off, I used the Pink Fresh Studio Curvy Leaf Die Set along with the Pink Fresh Studio Lots of Love Hot Foil Plate and Coordinating Die. Now I put this together off screen to save time. I will show the foiling process later if you're interested. If you don't like foiling, Pink Fresh does have a Lots of Love die set, so you could die cut the word Lots of Love and put it on the shadow die cut. I use gold glitter cardstock for the leaves, and on top of that put the Lots of Love that's foiled with gold foil. I feel like this background is a good reminder that just because you have stamps and stencils that go together doesn't mean you only have to use them straightforward. You can incorporate other techniques like heat emboss resist as I did here. Okay, let's move on to a different collection and look at lots of ways to mix and match how you use them or just use them alone. I was really excited about this floral lace collection because it's great for making backgrounds for different styles of cards and you can add pretty much anything on top of it that you may already have. And you'll see I do a variety of styles, some more elegant, some more kind of um, retro. It's nice to have all those options. So there's layering stencils, there is a die, and there is a hot foil plate all can be used together separately. Now I like the die so much, I have already cut it a bunch from white cardstock, ready to go and use on backgrounds whenever I need them. This is something I do when I've lost my crafty mojo. It gets me ready for the next time I feel creative. So I have a bunch of cards using this collection. Just to kind of help you really see the potential in different products because you want to make sure that you're gonna use a product a lot before you invest in it. For this first fun card, I'm using the hot foil plate and the layering stencils. If you're not into foiling, stick around. I have some non-foiling options coming up. I'm using the Spellbinders Glimmer Machine because that works with the die cut machine I have, which is the Spellbinders Platinum. I am putting the foil between my smooth white cardstock and the hot foil plate, kind of taping it in place, and then putting it face down on my warmed up foil machine. I'll then put the two plates on top, press the button, and when the light stops flashing, I'll take all of those plates out and run it through my die cut machine. So the glimmer machine provides the heat, the die cut machine applies the pressure, and it gives beautiful foiled results. So not only do we have this background, but I can use that leftover foil there, this piece that you see here, along with the Pink Fresh Studio Solid Hot Foil Plate. If you have a foil machine, I recommend this plate because it allows you to use your negative space foil for additional pieces. I almost always do that. 
So I'll just place this piece between smooth white cardstock and the solid hot foil plate. Put a little tape to secure it. I find that helps to get better results. Put that through our glimmer machine, do the timer button, and then run it through the die cut machine for the pressure. When I use the solid hot foil plate, I do like to let it warm up a little bit extra and go back and forth through the die cut machine a few extra times and look at how beautiful this is. So now we have the positive and the negative foiled backgrounds to use on two cards. I did do additional backgrounds just to show you different looks. Here I use the opal glimmer foil, which is clear, but adds iridescent shine to colored cardstock or to white cardstock. Here is the opaque white. Look at that on the blue cardstock. That's the negative. And I also used it on the white cardstock. We'll do a resist technique with that white background a little bit later. Here I use my favorite foil, the silver prism foil on white cardstock. We're gonna use this background in a moment. Here I did a glitter magenta foil on pink cardstock and I have the negative space background also. And then here is some pool cardstock with a slightly darker blue iridescent glimmer foil. So lots of different looks using the same. I'm not creating cards with all of these today because I can't fit them all in the video, but I will save them for later. Oftentimes when I have my foil machine out, I like to create a bunch at once so that they're ready to go. All right, so back to this card, I have my prism color foil on white cardstock, and I'm using the layering stencils to color them in. Another option here would just be to use marker to color it in. You can use your markers just to color inside of the foil and get a similar look. That's one of the ways that you can think about whether or not a layering stencil is needed when you do a background in one of these collections. You could skip the layering stencils and instead use your markers if you prefer to do that. However, in this case, I felt like the layering stencils were a great option because I can use them separately too, which you will see. So I'm using scraps of cardstock to kind of mask off different areas to apply different colors of inks. This is one of the ways I get new looks from my layering stencils by masking and using different colors. You could save time by just doing the same color over the whole stencil, but this really steps things up. I find that I like to use layering stencils with geometric patterns like this a lot because of this trick where you can mask off areas and do different colors. So I tend to lean towards geometric layering stencils. Now it's fun to do the floral kind of things like I showed you before, but I find I reach for these kind of geometric options over and over again. So that's something else you can consider when you're looking at different collections. And you'll notice I have a lot more cards using this style collection because of all the ways you can use it. So over the first stencil, I did like a medium amount of different colors of ink. Over the second stencil, I'm doing the same colors, but much darker or much heavier. And then for the third stencil, I'm doing a super light amount of ink. You could leave one of the stencils off and leave some of the openings white, and that'll give another look. After doing that third stencil, here is our background. I love the reveal and I love that foil shine with all the bold color. So here is a look at the completed card with this. Very basic, I trimmed it down and added it to a black note card. For the sentiment hello, I used the Birch Press, Birch Press Sugar Script Hello Foil Plate and Die. I used white foil on black cardstock, die cut that and added it to the card. They do have a die set that will cut that same look. And then I white heat emboss, sending happy thoughts on black cardstock and glued that below the hello. So this shows you the fun that you can get by using stencils and foil plates together, but you could just use the foil plate and markers if you prefer. All right, this next example uses our negative space that we created with the solid hot foil plate. This is the gold color foil that I did on white cardstock, and we're gonna add color into that. Now, the cool thing about foil is it resists dye inks that you put on top. You could use any dye inks or distress ink, and you can add color into those open areas, and the foil will stay the same color. Now I'm applying a light amount of pink, uh, coral, and orange, and then I will use a dry cloth to buff off any of the excess ink that will be settled on that foil. And you'll end up with this gold shimmery background and the bits of color showing through the openings. 
I trimmed that background down and added it to a white four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I used the Jeff Alpha dies to create the word hugs and also added a sentiment strip that says sending happy thoughts. There are little colored pearls at the center of each of those flowers just for a bit of dimension. This card shows you can get more from your hot foil plates by using the negative space on your cards. Okay, now let's do an example from this floral lace collection where we use the stencils alone. Remember earlier I recommended really considering those layering stencils from collections that can be used by themselves, and this is a good example. This time I'm doing one of my favorite things to do with geometric layering stencils, and that's like a blended look. Over the first stencil, I put this pink ink towards the top. Then over the second stencil, I'll put the pink ink towards the center. Over the third stencil, I'll put the pink ink towards the bottom. And you'll notice after doing just this, we get this really cool looking background. You could stop like this and get a different look from these stencils. So always think about that. You don't have to use your stencils exactly how they were intended. Look at that. It's pretty cool. But I'm going back to the first stencil. This time I'll put like a coral color at the middle. The second stencil, I'll put it towards the bottom. And the third stencil, I'll put it towards the top. So I'm just putting different colors of ink in different areas. So we have a lot of variation in the background. And then for the third color, I'm using a marigold color, just filling in the open spaces. It's okay if there's some ink left on there, it'll just help everything blend together even better. And then once we've completed that, look at that fun, colorful background. This is something fun about stenciling. That would be hard to achieve that look with stamps. Now for this card and a few others, I'll be using the older Pink Fresh Studio Detailed Leaf Collection. There are layering stencils, a stamp set, a coordinating die, and a hot foil plate. And I'll be using each of these in different ways throughout this video. I have always been a big fan of using leaf images on my cards because they can be used for a variety of occasions and with lots of different color combos. Off screen, I created this foil leaf and to give it a different look and to cover up less of my background, I trimmed the leaf down to be a bit smaller. That's a great way to get more use from your larger images. See if you can give them a haircut. Now the background I trimmed down and added to the center of the card with one of the floral lace die cuts behind it. I like how that floral lace die cut adds some interest and also continues that pattern. You could skip that lace die cut back there. It would still be great, but it's a fun way to use them together. The Take Care Sentiment is from the wonderful sentiment stamp set that I showed you at the beginning of this video. All right, here is another card that I created with one of these floral lace foiled backgrounds. This is a foil resist technique, and it gives a gorgeous result. So this white cardstock piece has the floral lace hot foiled with white foil. So it's white foil on white cardstock. It's hard to see on the video, but when I apply dye ink over it, that white foil will resist the ink we put on top and you get a really unique look. Now this is very similar to the lots of love card that we did earlier where I applied inks over a white heat embossed image. This time I did a white foiled image. So really this is a great way to step up either your stamps or your hot foil plates. So I trimmed that background down and I did a similar card design to the one that I just showed you because I really liked it. But this time I used a sentiment from the Pink Fresh Studio Wonderful in Every Way stamp set. Now this of course has the stamp set, layering stencils, hot foil plate, and coordinating dies. I am just using the stamps and dies for these great sentiments. I hope to use that floral image later on because it's beautiful. All right, here is the completed card. Remember that leaf image? This time I have the outline hot foiled and I use stencils to color in with green inks. I added that at the center of our resist background along with the die cut sentiment. And you can see I have a white die cut behind that that continues that pattern. So this shows how you can use your foil and inks for resist look. I hope that by seeing these different techniques with the same products, you're able to think of more ways to use products you have or ways to uh, think about how to use products you're considering purchasing. 
Now I know not everyone is interested in foiling or has the option of getting a foiling machine. So I wanted to share a technique that I actually like better than even the foiling and that is to use a foil plate to make an impression. Look at that textured background. This can be done with any die cut machine. I have my Spellbinders Platinum and I have it set up to make an impression with the die. You follow the instructions for making an impression with the die. It involves this flexible mat, which machines come with. I have a piece of watercolor paper that I misted with water and I'm placing my hot foil plate on top of it and running this through my die cut machine. Again, just following the instructions for making an impression with the die. If you want to learn more about this process, I will link up here on the top right to another video and one at the end of this video. And look at that beautiful impression. I love that look. You can also do this with your die, the floral lace die, but it looks even better when you use the foil plate. So this is something to really consider with foil plates. If you have a foil machine and have a bunch of foil plates, use them for impressions also for this dry embossed look. If you don't have a foil machine, you could always really consider some of these beautiful foil plates for this technique. Just looking for more ways to stretch these products. So now I'm using the coordinating stencils just to put a little bit of ink towards the center. This is a good reminder that you don't have to ink the entire layering stencil backgrounds. You can do smaller areas to create kind of a focal point and it gives a nice soft look. So now we have this fun texture with that bit of color at the center. By the way, I used watercolor paper for this because I think it gives great results, but you could do this with regular cardstock. Just do a mist of water first. It helps to make a nice clean impression. So I trimmed that down and added it to a note card and I'm using that curvy leaf die set, cut that from green and add it at the center along with one of those wonderful sentiments that says, thanks for everything. I wanted to keep this simple so a lot of that background would show. I also added a few gemstones here and there for a bit of shine. And again, if you don't have a hot foil plate, you can do this technique with a background die too. It gives somewhat similar results, but the hot foil plate does a great impression. All right, now let's use the die and stencils and skip the hot foil plate. This time I'm starting with a stenciled background. I'm not gonna show the process. It's similar to what I did before. I just did a rainbow of color over the stencils. Then I used the die to cut from silver matte cardstock. Sorry, my head gets in the way. And I'm gluing that right on top. This gives kind of a faux die cut inlay technique. That's very quick to do. If you do not have the stencils to go along with a die like this, you could always color in the openings with a marker. I wanted to keep this very simple since the background is so busy. So I just added a love you sentiment from uh, Concord and Ninth with white and black cardstock. I feel like this just demonstrates more ways that you can use these little collections of geometric backgrounds. If you're considering a collection of products, that's a really good place to start because of the many ways you can use them. Now here is a really fun one where I did die cut inlay, which I find very therapeutic, but you could use the stencils instead if you prefer, like I did on the last example. So off screen, I die cut the background die from lots of scraps of colorful cardstock, and I've already started the inlay process. You can see it here. I have a white die cut glued to a white note card. And in the openings of that white die cut, I'm placing these little teardrop shapes that I cut from colors of cardstock. It took me about 20 minutes to do that whole background. I love to do that. But again, if you don't like this type of process, you could use markers to fill in the openings, or you can use the stencils that we, as we did in the last example. But I'm telling you, there's something beautiful about die cut inlay. Some of the little teardrops I did with an iridescent cardstock, so that's why it looks like it lights up. Such a fun result. For a sentiment, I used the Jeff Alpha dies for you, and then added a sentiment strip right on top. One of the best things about this colorful inlay technique is that I have lots of leftover pieces for additional cards. So I'll do some more inlay cards and I have all of those colorful background die cuts left over that I'm going to use on this card. So in this case, I'm taking some background dies and layering them together, but offset for a fun look. You really can do this with a lot of different dies, but it's especially cool with background dies. 
So in this case, I'm using spray adhesive. Whenever I have a really intricate large die like this, I find that to be the fastest option. I sprayed on the back of the light blue die cut and I glued it on top of the dark blue die cut but slightly offset. I'll do the same with the green, gluing them together slightly offset. Then I'm going to glue all of these together, the blue on top of the green, offset once again. And you get such a fun look. This is especially effective with like rainbow of cardstock, but I'm using my leftover die cuts from the last card. Here's a closer look at that fun look. Again, you could do this with a variety of die cuts, but I love it with backgrounds. Because I've used these floral lace products so much here, I wanted a different look for this background. So I thought I'd frame it in. I took a scallop frame die cut and glued it on top. I will let that dry and then trim off anything that sticks off the edge. So this is another way that you can get a different look from a background. Do your die cutting, do your stamping, and then put a frame on top and trim off the excess. You can make this frame smaller even if you wanted to. Now I will glue this at the center of a larger white scallop frame onto the front of a note card. And I think this is a really fun way to use your frame dies and background dies together. For a sentiment, I'm using the Keep Smiling from this floral outline frame die set. So the set comes with the floral outline frame die and the Keep Smiling along with the shadow for the Keep Smiling. Here's that beautiful outline die. I'm not using it in today's video, but I did want to show you what it looked like. Here's the Keep Smiling with black and white cardstock. I added that to the card along with a white die cut created from that curvy leaves die set. I told you I love leaves. I also added some gold glitter drops. So think about any stamps or dies you have and how you can use a frame die to give it a nice focal point center area on your card and check out that offset layering of the die cuts in the center. Okay, so, so far I've given you some ideas for using background collections. Both sets of cards so far were for backgrounds. Now let's do some focal point images. So I'm using a floral collection and showing you some different ways to use them together and separately creatively. So here I have the Pink Fresh Today is Special collection. We have the stamp set, the coordinating dies, and the layering stencils. This one has like six or seven layering stencils together, so you can get a lot of detail and a great variation of color. We're going to use the stamp set and stencils together and separately. So here I have black heat embossed three images and die cut them. I will ink over all three of these in the same way. I put the die cuts onto a sticky mat and then I can lay the stencil over it, lining it up with the floral image and the sticky mat will hold the stencil in place. I'm creating these three floral images the same way. So I'm inking the same color over all three. After I've done the same thing to all three, I also will do three pieces of plain white cardstock that do not have the outline image so that we can create some floral pieces without the outline. So I'll do three this way. So we'll end up with six floral images in total. Three will have the outline and three won't. And these without the outline will have a much softer look to it. Now I'm not going to show all the layers of the stenciling because as I mentioned, there are several stencils in this set, but they're easy to layer up and you can use whatever colors or types of inks that you want. I'm using these layering stencils to color in these outline images, but keep in mind, if you prefer to watercolor or use Copic markers, you could do that instead of the layering stencils. For me, using ink and stencils is much more comfortable. And that's one of the reasons why companies offer these collections. So you can pick and choose what makes you the happiest. We'll end up with six of these floral images and I could create six cards from them using these floral pieces kind of as a focal point on the card. But I thought instead I would do a different card design to get a different look from these and have the floral images kind of hang off the side of my card. So it almost looks like a floral frame instead. So I have a note card here. I've already stamped the background with an older Pink Fresh Studio plaid stamp in light gray ink. I have three of my floral images here and I'm kind of picturing where I want them to be hanging off the card and using a little bit of temporary tape to tape them in place. 
Once I have all three temporarily taped in place, I can flip my card over and cut off the excess. Now notice there's a lot hanging off here, so I'll save all these extra pieces that I cut off and use them on a second card. So we'll end up with two cards with kind of a floral frame around the outside edge. Now when I add these images, I want them to have some dimension behind it. You could just use foam tape or squares behind each piece and add them to the card. I prefer to use scraps of cardstock behind my die cuts so that I get some nice strong dimension and use up some scraps. So this is a scrap die cut from some leftover white cardstock that I'm gluing to the back. And I'll glue two of those to the back of my image and trim off the excess. Now that excess I cut off, I will glue behind my other excess stamped piece for the other card. So I am able to pretty quickly pull together two really fun, bold floral cards this way. So I'll glue this layer die cut onto this card and I'll do the same with the other die cuts that are temporarily taped there. Then we have our bonus card here. I will use those leftover stacked die cuts to glue behind these and then add those to the card. So we end up with two floral frame cards and all we have to do is add a sentiment to the center. I did this exact same process with my other floral die cuts where we do not have the black outline. And you can see how those cards are much softer. You have a little bit of a different look. And by using that one large focal image, but offsetting it to the side of the card, cutting off some of the excess and using a second card, I was able to get a different look in two cards instead of one. The sentiments on all four of these cards are from the wonderful sentiment stamp set that I showed you at the beginning of the video. On three of the cards, I just stamped the sentiment with black. On one of the softer cards, I did a gold foil sentiment instead. I like that I have the option between the stamp set and the foil set for those sentiments. This card design is also a reminder to use some of your older background stamps with a really light ink to add just a bit of interest to a plain white note card. I really feel like it steps up these card designs and kind of pulls the background all together. So there you have it, a bunch of cards. I love that I was able to make so many cards using these products and there are many, many more ways you could use them. So I just hope this video is helpful in kind of rethinking these collections that companies come out with. They're not intended to be that you have to have them all, but rather let you pick and choose what interests you the most. Also, this is something that can be done with any products that you have in hand. There are a lot of techniques included in this video. Now, if you're interested in the supplies that I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description, but you can also head to my blog where there's a lot more information and you can even bookmark each of these cards for future reference. At the end here, I'll link the two videos I mentioned during this one. And I am thankful for all this time you spent with me. I hope you learned a thing or two and we'll see you again soon.